Well, today I thought we could do something really interesting and test a World War II gas mask to see if it would actually still work. So what I have here is a British light anti-gas respirator, or light anti-gas mask, and I believe this is a Mark I as it has the flat front, but where I've seen pictures online, all the different versions are often mislabeled Mark I and Mark II, so I can't be entirely sure. But I believe the Mark II has a bit that sticks out on the front, sort of like an extra cover. So... In 1943 this mask was developed, and the idea was, rather than having a normal general service respirators with a hose attaching to a big canister filter you'd wear on your haversack, you'd have a lighter 60mm filter that would go onto the side of the mask. Now, the Germans and a couple of other nations for quite a long time had been using removable screw filters, but the idea hadn't really caught on with the Allies, so that's what this was. And you can see this bears a resemblance to many of the modern masks. This is sort of where you're coming into the modern mask territory with this thing. So, 60 rather than the 40mm filter went on the left side of the mask, until they made a version where the filter went on the right side for left-handed shooters. Left-handed shooters had to still keep their old masks, but this was ideally a lot lighter. It's a very similar face piece to the other masks. This particular one has some interesting history behind it. Because although it was a British one, you can see the 1944 original stamp on it. And there's 1944 on the rubber there. I guess 144 means January 1944. Um, it was actually sent to the Danish army when Britain got rid of it as surplus in the 60s, when the S6 was introduced. And the Danes had it until they sold it on as military surplus after that. So I've got a British World War II mask that was used by Britain, then by Denmark, and now I own it again as a British collector. So that's fairly interesting. Now if you're saying that mask looks familiar, where have I seen it before? It's because the Canadian C3 is based on the second generation of this mask, or I said there would be a bit sticking out there. It's that bit there. Canadian C3 is a much more soft and nice rubber, a better voice diaphragm, and it actually has an inner mask. If I get that strap out of the way, you'll be able to see it. Maybe? Yeah, the inner mask nose cup is there. I'm not making it very easy on the video. There we go. To see. Whereas the light anti-gas respirator doesn't have any of that inside. So, obviously the Canadian C3 is the much better one, much more modernised until Canada got rid of that. Still 60mm port. But, as said, the light anti-gas respirator for when Britain used it was a very advanced mask for the time. Maybe not with Germany and other nations, but for Britain it was. And this set the trend for lightweight sort of canister on side masks that we see today. I've got a... 60 to 40 millimeter filter converter that came with it that um, was issued with it from the Danish army But I'm going to try a 60 millimeter finish filter on it first if that doesn't work then I'll go to a 40 millimeter modern filter But I thought it'd be very interesting to test because people keep asking me to do a World War 2 gas mask test With most of my World War 2 gas masks that isn't safe to do Because the filters are so old and contain asbestos But with this thing I can put a modern filter on it People have been asking me to test the, my VM40, which I'm not going to do because it's a German mask. Nazi masks are very valuable. The rubber's in very good condition, so I want to keep it as is, boxed. But this thing I'm happy to test because you t see them quite often as surplus and they're not very much to buy. So it'll be very interesting. If the rubber's held up on the inside of the valves, then the mask will still work. So let's get to testing it. Right, that's the mask on. It has no voice diaphragm, so I have to shout and then amplify the speech later. Now, it's already fogging up because it's got no nose cup inside it. That's airtight when it's like that. But air can slightly get in. So, for the sake of this video, I'll probably just fold it here to test it, because we're mostly testing the seals this mask, not the straps. So, let's see if the finished filter works, if not we'll swap it to another 30 millimetre filter. Right, so far I can't smell anything. I'll keep my hand here and test. That seems pretty much airtight. So, I think the finished filter is working. Let's have a look at the mask then. I'll just take my hand away and I'll say if I smell anything. This is, um, as I said, it's fogging out quite badly now. British light anti-gas respirator from World War II. This model is dated 1944, but it entered service in 1943. 
Oh, I've broken the seal on the mask. I can smell that now. Let's see if I can get these straps a bit tighter. But as I haven't smelled anything for the first part, I think the mask itself works fine. Right, is that still working? The smell of air freshener is gone. Mask's on a bit tighter and yeah, it seems to be working again. Yeah, there we go, air tight seal. So, I'm just working out if there's a way I can breathe out without fogging up the lenses on it. I guess breathing out as slowly as possible defogs it. But as said, for Britain this was quite an advanced mask for the time. Simply because before you'd have a very similar face piece to this, but you'd have a hose that connected there. Non-removable easily to a filter canister on your belt. This one was the idea of a lightweight rifle you could shoulder easily to shoot. Your Lee Enfield, your Sten gun or whatever. And as said, this mask inspired the Canadian C3. Because it was just an updated, better version of the Mark II of this mask. And, um, yeah, this mask was used in services in by Britain until the 60s when the S6 replaced it. Although apparently it was quite a while before they finally phased it out somewhere into the 70s for all regiments and the sort of territorials and everything. And, um, yeah, so, and used this one by Denmark, of all places, so... That's a very odd thing, but that's apparently the case. I'm just wondering if I get that a bit tighter to my face. No, that's broken the seal doing it. That's it. The problem is my chin is not fat enough for all of these masks. If I had more fat there, there'd be less of a gap. But the actual seals on this mask are working fine. It just doesn't fit my face that much. If I found a way to reliably tighten it, then it would be a good mask. But I am pretty certain that this mask, despite being dated 1944, is still working absolutely fine. So, this is the funny thing. And this is what I've tried to make the point to people, that where sites say masks are obsolete and that you shouldn't buy them, surplus, military surplus masks are useless, all this, it totally depends on how well the mask has been kept and the quality of the mask originally. A mask like this, that is dated 1944, using a 60mm filter from the 1980s, is still somehow functioning. Now, of course there are better modern masks, but the fact is this would save your life if you'd put, let's say, for argument's sake, use the 60 to 40mm converter, you put a brand new 40mm NATO filter on it, you had the straps properly adjusted to your face, this mask in the gas attack would save your life, there's no doubt about it, because the seals still work. Of course there are much more comfortable newer masks with better voice diaphragms, defogging system, nose cups, more comfortable straps and everything. But a mask from 1944 still works. And this is the thing I really want to try and get across to people. A mask when it passes 20 years or 10 years of service or whatever, and is put onto the surplus market, that does not mean the mask has failed. It's because militaries have very high standards, as well as sort of contracts and military industrial complex, of keeping soldiers using the latest masks. Because the masks are all rubber and metal, sometimes plastic, the pieces don't fail because they simply get old. They normally fail because they've not been stored properly. If you get a gas mask, Put it in a cupboard out of the way, hopefully in a tin or in a bag. The cupboard's cool, you know, light, sunlight doesn't hit the mask. The temperature doesn't shift rapidly. There's nothing that's going to attack the mask, eat away at it. Nothing in that mask will fail until the parts eventually wear down. Now this mask is about 73 years old, as I said, 1944. And it still works. How crazy is that? So there you go. A big thumbs up for the British light anti-gas mask. It is still functioning 73 years on from when it was built. How good is that? I just took the mask off, tightened the straps. It is now really tight to my head. But perfect seal. So there you go. British light anti-gas respirator Mark 1. 
73 years old and still going strong. So there you go, World War II masks, as long as you can put a new filter on them, can still work.